Desiree Dubonnet here, International Medical University. Today's lesson... Today's presentation is on allergies. We're going to learn all about allergies, how they become, how they get started, how we can treat them, how we can clear all the different allergies that people come to you with. First, let's learn about allergy. An allergy is an overreaction of the immune system to a normally harmless substance called an allergen. Common allergens include pollen, animal dander, downed feather, mites, chemicals, variety of foods. Human skin can even be a problem. At first exposure, it goes into the nose, that allergen, lodges into a nasal passage, and then it gets into the antigen, which then presents it to the T cell. The T cell then will activate B cells, and these react and release IgE antibodies. The antibodies sit on the mast cell. The mast cells have granules containing chemical meteors like histamines, prostaglandins, and etc. On exposure, when this allergen happens and hits, it gets to the mast cell, links a histamine, and when this histamine starts to cascade and get greater and greater release, we have a problem. It causes dilation in the blood vessels, increase in the permeability. Then we have stuffiness. We have rhinitis. We have other problems. And antihistamines will block these type of histamine reactions. And that's a symptomatic procedure. Let's learn a little bit more about allergies and see their emotional connection. Because it is truly the emotions that really start to trigger them. Phoebe Hamilton's body has inbuilt protection against the outside world. It's a rabbit's foot. For luck. Her immune system is designed to react to anything that gets under her skin. So what brings you to Florida? My wife. I'm here to see a friend. Boyfriend. No, not exactly. So when's the wedding? Oh, no, no, no. I, uh, I haven't seen him since I left college. Is that so? But the system can fail. And when it goes wrong, the effects can be disastrous. As Phoebe, in the next two weeks, is going to find out. Hey, this is your captain speaking. Welcome to Florida, a place we call paradise on Earth. We wish you a safe and happy stay. What? I know, I've changed, right? <laughs> Phoebe's immune system is about to be called into action. Oh my god, what is that? That is a wasp. It's enormous. Yeah, it's pretty big. She has never encountered an American wasp before. <laughs> The wasp pumps venom into her skin. Within seconds, the venom starts to kill her skin cells and trigger pain nerves. Ow. Are you serious? Are you okay? Yeah, it's nothing. It's, it's fine. Let's go. It's time for Phoebe's body to fight back. Throughout her skin are specialist immune cells called mast cells. Bathed in venom, they react, discharging their contents, a chemical known as histamine. Histamine makes tiny blood vessels expand. Fluid leaks out, flooding the damaged area with the immune system's most powerful weapon antibodies. But histamine also has unpleasant side effects. 
The build-up of fluid under Phoebe's skin makes it red, hot and swollen. Ow! Oh, God, sorry. Now the search is on to find an antibody against wasp venom. Phoebe's bloodstream is full of antibodies, each one tailor-made to fight a specific invader. The antibodies in her blood tell the story of her life. This one protects Phoebe against a virus she caught when she was three. This one is for a bacteria Phoebe encountered when she was ten. Phoebe even has antibodies against food. These don't stop food from being nutritious, but her body makes them because it sees any foreign object, even an apple, as a potential killer. John! But because Phoebe has never been stung by a wasp before, she has no antibodies in her blood against its venom. Instead, her body must make them from scratch. Here we are. Hope you're hungry. Mm. I've never had shark before. Isn't it delish? I mean, don't you find it delish? Remember how you used to say that? I never said delish. You did so. <laughs> A remarkable process is beginning back in Phoebe's skin. The wasp venom brings dormant cells, called dendritic cells, to life. These cells have a mission to carry samples of venom to the heart of the immune system where antibodies are made. But it's a complex process that will take several days. How are you feeling? It's a bit better. You know, maybe we should put some ice on it. No, it's fine. So, um, have you rented this beach house for the whole summer? Mm-hmm. A whole crowd of you? Yeah, well, the others come down when they feel like it. And who's down there at the moment? Well, at the moment, just me. Fine, Spike. Phoebe's antibodies are meant to protect her. But sometimes her immune system makes the wrong type of antibody, which can do her more harm than good. I just know you two are going to get along. <laughs> like wasp venom, tiny fragments of dog hair invade Phoebe's body, this time through her nose. Hey, kisses for your daddy. Kisses for your daddy. Here, you want to feed him? This isn't the first time Phoebe has been exposed to dog hair, so she's already made antibodies against it. Good boy. Unfortunately for Phoebe, she's made the wrong type. They're called E antibodies, and unlike regular antibodies, they cling to mast cells which guard the lining of her nose. They are going to bring Phoebe nothing but trouble. Can you get it, sir? Thank you. E antibodies aren't meant for tiny invaders like fragments of dog hair. They're intended for much larger intruders, parasites, like tapeworms and ticks. They trigger a dramatic chain reaction designed to blast parasites away. As dog hair locks onto E antibodies, Phoebe's mast cells erupt and pour out their histamine. Oh, 
the blood vessels in Phoebe's nose start to leak. The fluid escapes as a wave of surplus mucus, which would wash any parasites away. But there are no parasites in Phoebe's nose. Instead, E-antibodies are giving Phoebe an allergy. As young children, all of us have a tendency to make E-antibodies. Then, through exposure to infections, our immune systems learn how to make regular antibodies instead. But Phoebe was overprotected from dirt and disease. So her immune system never fully made the switch. Get down! She still has a tendency to make E antibodies. Phoebe is not alone. Half the population of Europe and America have some sort of allergy. Now her emotions have locked in an intense allergic reaction that is waiting. Let's see what happens. 24 hours after Phoebe was stung by the wasp, there's little sign of damage. But her body is already preparing for its next encounter with wasp venom. The dendritic cells carrying venom have reached a gland in her armpit. They construct a filter, designed to intercept cells which can manufacture antibodies. Morning. Morning. Still the same old crazy Phoebe. Couldn't wait to experience the great outdoors, huh? Mm. Spike, where are your manners? Go say good morning. No, please. Just stay away. I'm allergic to him. You're kidding. Sorry, I thought it would pass. It's, just... it's no problem. He can stay outside and we can stay inside. Well, it's not like it'll rain forever. Spike loves Scramble. Action. Double word score. Inside the gland in Phoebe's armpit, an immune cell called a B cell is trapped. It reacts to the wasp venom and starts to clone itself. Each clone capable of producing antibodies against wasp venom. The B cell should make regular antibodies. As the first one springs into action, it's clear they've made a disastrous error. They've mistaken the venom for a parasite. They make E antibodies. Antibodies which will make Phoebe allergic to wasps. Phoebe's immune system has gone into overdrive. Every second, each B cell clone spews out over 2,000 E antibodies against wasp venom. The E antibodies lock onto mast cells all over Phoebe's body. When they reach a critical level, 
she'll be allergic to wasps. Phoebe's mast cells are turning into ticking time bombs. Phoebe, don't move. Who needs a rabbit's foot? Sun's out. I didn't get stung. Maybe my luck's about to change. Phoebe may think her troubles are behind her, but things are about to take a turn for the worse. Her mast cells are being called into action again, this time by the sun's ultraviolet rays. Ultraviolet penetrates her skin, killing some of its cells. Sensing a threat, Phoebe's mast cells erupt, releasing histamine to summon antibodies. As a result, after just 10 minutes in the sun, Phoebe's skin is becoming inflamed. Hey, Phoebe, maybe we should get out of the sun. Maybe you're just worried I might be a natural. Oh, yeah? 24 hours later, Phoebe is burning up. And it's all down to histamine. The fluid that has built up under her skin is irritating nerve endings, making her incredibly tender. Yeah, I thought maybe we can go snorkeling today. Are you joking? Look at me. I did warn you, didn't I? Come on. You come on. You didn't come all this way just to sit around, did you? I'm beginning to wonder why I came here at all. My life has been made of misery. A dog and a napkin. Don't insult my dog. Your bloody dog tore up my rabbit's foot. Oh, loosen up, Phoebe. Oh, you've really changed. Yeah. I was hoping you had, too. Phoebe's burnt skin is already beginning to heal. But beneath its surface, trouble is brewing. E-antibodies on her mast cells have reached a critical level. Phoebe is allergic to wasps. If she's stung now, her symptoms will be totally different to the last time. This is ridiculous. You're right, I didn't come all this way just to sit around. Okay, I know a place. It's cool, shady, no dogs or wasps. How do you like your shark? Medium or well done? Just make it stop. <laughs> Once again, wasp venom floods into Phoebe's skin. But thanks to E-antibodies, her mast cells are now a thousand times more sensitive than the last time she was stung. She's about to experience the most extreme allergic reaction possible, known as anaphylactic shock. In just a fraction of a second, thousands of mast cells around the sting erupt. Even worse, tiny traces of venom surge through her bloodstream and trigger millions more. Fluid pours out of her blood vessels throughout her skin, 
It's as if she's been stung all over. What's happening to me? Doesn't look that bad. Maybe I should be bad. The fluid leaking out of her blood activates nerve endings that make her itch. It's a response designed to get her to scratch off parasites, but now it's out of control. So much fluid has been lost from her bloodstream into her skin that her blood pressure plummets. She starts to feel faint. Phoebe can't breathe properly. Because high levels of histamine make her airways close down. In a desperate attempt to save her, her body releases an antidote to histamine. Adrenaline. Adrenaline makes Phoebe's blood vessels contract and stops them from leaking. It also makes her airways open up. I think, I think it's passing. But Phoebe's respite is short-lived. There are still traces of venom in her blood, finding new mast cells to trigger. Oh my god, 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 oh my god. Phoebe's blood pressure has halved. Her heart beats faster to try to pump blood round her body, but it's fighting a losing battle. If she isn't treated within the next five minutes, she'll die. Phoebe. Phoebe, I hope you have insurance. She's okay when she got stung before. Can you take it out? Put some oxygen on you, baby. Okay, Epi, point three. The doctor's prescription is the same as her body's, adrenaline. But at a quantity 30 times greater than Phoebe can produce. Again, adrenaline races through her bloodstream. But this time, there's enough to stop the effects of histamine for good. Within minutes, Phoebe is brought back from the brink of death. Don't worry, Phoebe, you're in hospital. But in case she's ever stung again, she'll have to carry adrenaline with her... You're gonna be fine. ...for the rest of her life. You had us worry for a minute there, Phoebe. Sorry. I have got medical insurance. You heard that? Uh, guess you'll be glad to go home. Oh, you haven't got rid of me yet. We uh, still have time to go on that snorkeling trip. Mm. Spike loves snorkeling. <laughs> so as we have seen, it's the intense negative emotions of fear and anger and other negative emotions that really started up the trigger where the body started to build an excess of different antibodies. These get stored in the mast cells. Stress really is the medical concern, and it is the cause. We're going to be able to use the skio to reduce stress to do more, to help reduce the allergic reactivity.
This can be done through a quantum electromagnetic biofeedback cybernetic loop. Stimulus and response, stimulus and response. So we can try to desensitize the patient. We're going to have to learn that we need to eat good oils, avoid the bad oils, eat good sugars, avoid the bad sugars, and to work with the different parts of the body. Now we've covered this in many different areas of the electroosmosis and different things and how the system works on bioterrain maps and etc. But today's lecture is going to be more about just what is our ways to help to correct the allergies, to help to get over this. Not just to put electricity into the body and stabilize the cells, but what can we do? Some people say that laughter is the best medicine for allergies. I'd like to say to start with that. Cabbage juice is also very good and can help with different types of allergies, as does eye bright. It can also be very helpful. We want to make sure we get plenty of the omega-3. In fact, a good, nice dose of liquid omega-3 can help. It's one of the good oils. And it can help to lower that activity. Now, recognize that the f different ideas of food allergies can be displayed through what we see here. These are what happens. And constipation or pencil stools can tell us that there's swelling in the intestinal walls. Marigold extracts have been also helpful and been shown, as well as different uh, compounds of lutein. These also have been very helpful in helping the body to deal with allergy reactions. All the different stressors that come on the body, toxins and etc., affect the lymph system. And this is where allergies often hide. Now let's look at nasal lavage techniques. Hi, I'm Dr. Andy McFarlane and I'm going to demonstrate a nasal lavage. First, you use warm water. Uh, you fill to the marker and you use a buffer to saline mix. There are different kinds that are available across the counter in the store. Usually 50 different treatments are available for about $10. These are quite effective for acute uh, rhinitis or chronic allergic rhinitis. Um, you fill the bottle to the marked line with warm water, uh, close the top, shake it to dissolve it, put one side in one nose and one nostril and squeeze. That's a moderate force lavage and then you take the second half, put it in the opposite side and squeeze. And you notice that I'm a little more blocked on one side than the other. Thank you. This is always the way. There's a little more blockage. Adenoids and tonsils. These are really the, what helps us to defend against virus and allergies. Oftentimes a little bit of crud gets caught in a tonsil and it can't get shook out. Now here's what happens. This is what we call a tonsillar stone. This can produce an increase in allergies, an increase in viruses, an increase in sore throats and all this. What we're doing right now is taking out that little tonsillar stone, oftentimes caused by just a tiny little piece of popcorn or something that might get caught in the folds of the tissue. This can fester and can't get free. And here's one of the things. Right there, pops it out, and now it's better. Leave that in there and it can produce cancer and a host of other different things. Let's look at other things about allergies. allergies. We aren't talking tequila, but this serum will definitely clear up your allergies and keep them from coming back. Our sponsor, Dr. Mascaro, is joining us now to tell us about the allergy treatment that you can drink. Are you kidding me? No, it's true. I've you never can heard actually, of that before. You can actually drink this serum at home. Well, I know a lot of people, you know, they think of allergies and getting the allergy shots to make them feel better. And I think that's a lot of, a lot of the reasons why people don't go get the help that they need. Right. Would you want to get a shot no. every week? Would you want to stay there 10 minutes after you get a shot to make sure you don't have a reaction and go to the hospital? No, and then no. what if you do get the reaction? Well, then I don't want that either. Yeah, but it's expensive. It's time-consuming. This you can do in your home. Okay. Just the kit. We give you the kit. We do all the testing for this. Okay. In the office. Not only do we do allergy testing from the outside, we do food sensitivity. Okay. We do over 
154 foods wow. that you might be sensitive to. So we get the whole gamut as to why you have the problem, and then we fix it. It's really simple. Well, you know, I think allergies, and I think spring, you know, right. and, but we're going into the fall. There are a lot of, I don't have allergies, so thank goodness, but a lot of people do. Knock on wood yeah, somewhere. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. A lot of fall allergies? Big, big fall allergies. Things die. And when they die in the fall, the spores are released. And when they Go come with, back to life? There it is. Got spring, fall, it's all year round. Right. Can't get around. Now's the time to get in the office. Okay. Insurance will pay for it. All right. They, it's very minimal outlay. It may be a copay. Okay. We can do it in a couple doctor visits, and they go home and drink their shots. Well, you've definitely had a lot of great results, and Cheryl Miller, one of your clients, mm -hmm. actually, let's, uh, let's see what Cheryl had to say. Anytime I did have allergies, uh, I didn't want to do anything. You know, they, they stopped me from actually going and doing things because I didn't feel good. And now that I don't have allergies, when allergy season comes, they don't bother me. You know, I can continue to do what I go and do. And I don't have allergies, so it doesn't have where I don't get sick. I don't have issues. So it, it pretty much doesn't inconvenience my life anymore. Well, this is safe and it's natural. How long does it take from start to finish? Well, the whole process would be a couple months. Okay. But they should start feeling some kind of relief immediately. It's a slow-acting type process, but the body develops immunity to those particles. Now we have the food sensitivities coming in, uh -huh. so we, we, work, we work on that, so it's the total picture. But it's all natural. Everything we do is natural. Right, and yeah. I, I love your program, and I, and I love you know, everything that you talk about with mm -hmm. Regenesis. Mm -hmm. What is your philosophy with Regenesis Wellness? Well, our philosophy is simple. We find it, fix it, and follow it. Very simple. Seems pretty easy to me. Eat, isolate the etiology, the cause, bring in the program, and just follow it. And you don't treat everyone like they're the same. I, I, that's what I hear with a lot of yeah. your testimonials, is you treat everyone on an individual basis. At Regenesis, we treat people, not symptoms. Okay. We look at the whole patient. That's right. Perfect. We hear a lot of great things coming from Regenesis, and uh, I think people being able to drink their allergy medicine, mm -hmm. their all-natural mm -hmm. allergy serum, you're going to get a lot of people on this one. Well, I hope so. You definitely will. All right. Well, Dr. Mascaro's contact information is right there on your screen. It mentions Sonoran Living Live. And we will cover your copay. How cool is that? The program could be absolutely free for you. There's their information. And again, mention Sonoran Living, and they are going to uh, pay your copay. It doesn't get better than that. Dr. Mascaro is a sponsor of Sonoran Living Live. It's the weak link that really hits this as the allergy is. What we saw here is a process of desensitization now. Here we had the camel, the straw that broke the camel's back. And oftentimes it's the allergy that's the last straw, where it's all those other things that are weighing us down. You can do your own allergy test when you take little bits of the matter and put it on the skin, a little scratch test, where you can have it done by the doctor's office. Once we find the item that is reactive, we can get a small bit of it, crush it up, and put it into a one ounce bottle which holds about 600 drops. We put one drop of the suspected allergen into the bottle and suss it 15 times. That means hit it on the hand there and shake it 15 times, striking it violently. Next, we put one drop of that into a gallon of water where there's approximately 76,000 drops. This makes us, and we suss it again, of course, and this makes us our 6X formula, one part per million. This is one of the ideas of homeopathy, and you can do this at home. Now you start with one sip of this water, which is one part per million, and wait an hour to see if there's any type of reaction. You might even wait a full day. Once you're comfortable, then you can drink that entire water and help to wash away your allergies. You're using one part per million, very, very small, light dose to desensitize, very similar to the doctor giving you those shots. People use them sublingually. You can also wash away your allergies by using that same gallon and use a half gallon and rinse it through the nose in the lavage method. And this will help to expose those areas with a very small amount of that allergen to help reduce the mast cell storage. As you do this, you can rinse away the allergies with a major lavage. You can wash away the allergies by drinking that gallon of water. Once you've been able to do this, you can then move past the 6x to a 5x, a 4x, and a 3x, gradually increasing the procedure until you get to the place where you can now deal with the allergy and it's gone. You can desensitize and remove those mast cell collections.
very much. So just how dangerous could it be for kids with allergies if the schools don't take these measures? Let's bring in Dr. Manny Alvarez. He's the managing editor of FoxNewsHealth.com. You know, we all look at these situations. We didn't have this when we were kids. You know, not every teacher was armed with an EpiPen. And well, that's, it's a the, that's world. the reality. You have four million kids usually uh, that are allergic to food. Half of them are allergic to nuts and peanuts and things like that. 18% like that. increase since 2004 in the uh, food allergy category. So this is a big problem. I myself have a child with with peanut allergy and is deadly I mean if they get a, a major anaphylactic reaction uh, this could be in a matter of minutes they stop breathing and if you are not ready if you're not set for it those, yeah, those kids well, can die so, so you're talking about about 150 cases of, of kids that could die potentially a year what about the parents who say look it's just not fair to have peanut tables and non peanut tables you can't bring this you can't bring that and my kid can't go I'm not sure who we can play with and I mean it's just it's a lot of responsibility it's a lot of responsibility but you know you know you have the, the problem is so severe mm -hmm. yeah. that you have to take uh, significant measures, and the only way to do it is to exclude peanuts altogether uh, from uh, you know from schools. You know, I look at some airlines; they still are serving peanuts in airlines, and that you know, you know how they don't clean their airplanes and there's peanuts laying around in the seats. Uh, that's a potential problem because you, if you're 35,000 feet up in the air and you get an ana anaphylactic reaction from from peanuts, you, you know, well, I it's, never it's heard a, of this before a couple of years ago. I mean, I never heard of this. We've yeah. been for time and memoriam, and we've never had peanuts allergies to this extent yeah, you know and the research is changing now there's a trial in Duke University and what they're doing is they're finding a way to introduce uh, peanut protein in very small quantities mm -hmm. and this is something not for you to try at home this has to be done under supervision but it's very promising it's going to be the same type of treatment I think that you get for let's say uh, the regular seasonal allergies where they inject you with with grass right. and different kind of uh, uh, material and ultimately your body gets used to it but the fundamentals are that large numbers high percentage very big problem parents have to con understand that if, if there's a kid with uh, with peanut allergy in the school they have to really uh, play ball in this in this problem yeah. Yeah. Sure thank you yep. dr. Manning thank you six months ago young Michael Frost would have suffered a massive allergic reaction if he'd taken a bite from a peanut now the nine-year-old is able to eat the snack with no ill effect he's one of four children taking part in a groundbreaking clinical trial his mother, Kate, is delighted. It was smaller than an eighth of a peanut, and he got covered head to toe in hives. The trial at Addenbrooke's Hospital in Cambridge, England, has given the children a tolerance to the nuts. We definitely had some children who reacted to less than one two hundredth of a whole peanut. These were very sensitive kids. We started by giving them that dose and working up very, very slowly to an enormous, relatively enormous dose of 800 milligrams of protein, which is the equivalent of five peanuts, and now we've challenged these kids to a further five peanuts and found they can tolerate it. Food allergies occur when the body's immune system mistakenly sees compounds from foods as invaders and creates antibodies to fight them. Peanut allergy sufferers must avoid even the tiniest amount of food containing the nut. Extreme cases can lead to an anaphylactic shock, which can be fatal. It's the first time patients have successfully been desensitized to a food-related allergy. Jim Drury, Reuters. This isn't the first time. We've been doing it homeopathically for a long, long time. You can do it yourself, as I've shown you. Also, you need to remove contact with the allergen. Let's learn a little bit more about removing the contact. Understanding allergies is half the battle in controlling your symptoms. Allergies can cause sneezing, congestion, watery eyes, wheezing, and other telltale symptoms. If your physician has diagnosed you with allergies, you may be wondering what causes them or what the best steps are to decrease symptoms. Learning about allergies will help you understand what steps to take. To get you started, here are some allergy basics. Allergens. People with allergies react to substances called allergens. Allergens are harmless to most people, but when you have allergies, your body finds these substances dangerous and reacts by producing antibodies to protect against them. People vary in their degree of sensitivity to allergens, the types of symptoms they experience, and the severity of their allergic reactions. In all cases, reducing allergens in your home environment is a great step for finding relief. Indoor allergens. The three primary indoor allergens are dust mite allergens, mold spores, and pet dander. 
that together these three allergens can trigger severe allergy symptoms if you don't take any steps to reduce your exposure to them. Allergic threshold. Your allergic threshold determines how sensitive you are to an allergen. If you're very sensitive and it doesn't take much exposure to cause an allergic reaction, you have a low allergic threshold. Allergen load. Your allergen load is the total exposure you have at any given time to the various allergens that you are sensitive to. Allergen avoidance. Allergen avoidance steps are actions taken around the home to reduce your exposure to allergens. They include encasing your bed, cleaning, and capturing airborne allergens with air filters and purifiers. Does this sound like a lot to absorb? It really isn't. Here's a simple analogy that will illustrate how allergens affect you. Now picture a glass, which represents your allergic threshold. A small glass, or a low threshold, overflows easily when too much liquid is poured inside. A larger glass, or a high threshold, can tolerate greater amounts of liquid before it overflows. The liquid filling your glass is your allergen load. It may contain one of several types of allergens like dust mites, pet dander, or moles. A contact with too many allergens or ones that you are particularly sensitive to will cause the glass to overflow. The glass overflowing represents your allergic reaction. Allergy relief is found by minimizing the amount of exposure to the types of allergens you are sensitive to. If you take simple allergen avoidance steps around the home, you can reduce your allergen load and keep exposure to various allergens at a minimum. This goes a long way toward achieving allergy relief. Reducing your overall exposure doesn't have to be an all or nothing project. As long as you keep your exposure below your allergic threshold, you can prevent allergy symptoms from flaring up. And the best way to get started on reducing those allergens in your home is by encasing your bed. In the next few slides, we will review the technique to stop an asthma crisis without any medication, thanks to the gesture method. The problem area is, 90% of the time, situated under the left armpit and very rarely under the right armpit. Place your right hand on the left thorax so that your index finger is positioned under the left armpit. Probe with your finger to find the space between ribs. Gently massage the space between the ribs while probing for a small lump. You should find a point, or several, that will be very painful to your finger's pressure. Something like a small bowl of grease that you can roll under your finger. Once you have located it, gently apply pressure which will make you grimace with pain. Now, massage mildly while pressing just to the limit of the pain you can endure. At this time, you should inhale deeply. You will notice that breathing becomes easier. If massaging and pressing the most painful point is not sufficient, to make you feel 100% better, look for another lump nearby the one you are working on or under the right armpit. This should take care completely of the crisis. Warning! This technique is of no use in breathing difficulty, which is not asthma but the spasm of the throat. This condition is sometimes called false asthma. For more information about the gesture method and how to cure asthma without medication, please visit asthmareality.com and find us on YouTube and Facebook.
The Bateko method was developed by Russian doctor Konstantin Bateko, who started his study towards the link between breathing patterns and diseases more than 40 years ago. A clinical trial held in Australia in 1994 found that after 12 weeks, asthma sufferers reduced their intake of bronchodilated medication by 90%. Steroid medication was reduced by 49%. And this reduction in medication was accompanied by a reduction in symptoms and an improvement in the quality of the life of the patients. Those in a control group using conventional treatments were only able to reduce medication intake by 5% or less. Despite all the attempts by medical doctors, pharmacists and scientists, the incidence and severity of asthma is on the increase. Many asthmatics are finding themselves increasingly dependent upon anti-asthma medication. Others spend years following complex and multi-step plans without seeing much improvement in their condition. None of this should seem surprising as the cause of asthma is still unknown. Fortunately, a method does exist to combat asthma without the medication. It's called the Bateko method. It can be used by both children and adults and can be incorporated into their daily lives. We are constantly told to eat healthy food and stay fit and pay attention to issues such as cholesterol, weight and blood pressure. But one aspect of our body functioning that we tend not to think about is our breathing. For a well person, it's taken for granted. But for an asthma sufferer, breathing is a matter of life and death. We're used to thinking that the purpose of breathing is to get as much oxygen from the air as possible and that carbon dioxide exhaled is a waste product, just like the exhaust fumes from a car. But this belief undervalues the true value of carbon dioxide. In fact, carbon dioxide is as valuable to our bodies as oxygen. Carbon dioxide is necessary in the chemical reaction, which allows oxygen to be released from the blood into the tissues. That's why, paradoxically, the more you breathe, the more carbon dioxide you exhale which results in being less available oxygen for your body to release into the tissues. So that means that carbon dioxide is vitally important in the utilisation of oxygen in our bodies. Carbon dioxide also determines the alkalinity acidity balance of our internal environment, which should be kept within a strict range. When we breathe incorrectly and exhale too much carbon dioxide, the body responds by excreting important minerals. This loss will eventually affect the functioning of all the body's major systems. Carbon dioxide has a relaxing effect on the smooth muscle that wraps around the airways and blood vessels in our bodies. In other words, carbon dioxide acts as a bronchodilator. But unlike symptomatic medication, the carbon dioxide produced by your body cannot harm you. It follows that if you restore the normal level of carbon dioxide in your body by a correct breathing cycle, you may not need relieving medication. So just to summarise, carbon dioxide helps utilise oxygen in our tissues. It regulates the acid alkaline balance in our bodies and has a relaxing effect on our airways and blood. Now, so far in this workshop, we've learned to use the breath to energize the body, different energization techniques using the power of the breath. We've used the power of the breath to release emotional traumas and also to remove mental blockages. Now, there have been many studies in India and in China and even in Russia where there have been medical uses of breathing techniques for chronic illnesses. They've treated chronic illnesses such as peptic ulcers, uh, tuberculosis, hypertension, insomnia. All of these have been well treated, successfully treated with different breathing techniques. So the next technique we're going to learn is the asthma prania. Asthma now, I have to caution you, this pranayama is not a substitute for medical supervision or for a doctor's advice or medication. So, you don't replace your existing uh, doctor's uh, medication with this pranayama. It is a supplementary technique that will help those who currently suffer from asthma. 
And also, anybody who practices this asthma pranayama will very likely never have asthma in their life. That is the benefit of this healing pranayama, the asthma pranayama. It's a supplementary technique. And if done regularly, will retrain the breathing muscles, the respiratory muscles, so that the asthma attacks are lessened. It cannot prevent necessarily an asthma attack if it comes, but the intensity of it will be lessened, and eventually after lots of practice, there may be less and less eventual uh, attacks coming in the future. So it's a very good technique that I encourage you to teach any of your friends, uh, any of your relatives, anybody you know who suffer from asthma attacks. Now nobody know exactly, nobody knows exactly all the causes for asthma and why it happens, but the effect is that a person's respiratory system freezes and they cannot breathe and that can be uh, very dangerous. Of course, so it is a, uh, a serious uh, uh, problem. And so uh, having a tool that can lessen the effect and even prevent it is very helpful. The asthma pranayam consists of three parts. In the first part, you're going to breathe in through the nose continuously. And then you're going to breathe out through the mouth in parts. What do I mean by breathing out in parts? Breathing out in parts mean you cut up the inhale or the exhale, in this case the exhale, into three, four parts. I'll demonstrate. <laughs> now you don't breathe in between the parts, otherwise you defeat the whole purpose of exhaling. So you don't breathe in and out. You're really exhaling, but you're cutting up the exhale into three or four different parts. And when we're doing this exhale, we are placing the lower lip inward, pulling it inward, so that the upper lip overhangs the lower lip. So, so I'm going to demonstrate the first part of the asthma prania. We're going to do this up to five times. That is the first part. In the second part, we're going to breathe in in parts through the nose and breathe out continuously through the mouth. So I'm going to demonstrate. So that is the second part of the asthma pranayama. In the third part, we breathe in through the nose in parts and we breathe out through the mouth in parts. I will demonstrate.
That is the complete asthma pranayam consisting of three parts. For those who have no problems with asthma, this pranayam is a great pranayam to energize the respiratory system. For those who are suffering from asthma, it will retrain the respiratory system so that you have a greater control over your breathing. Continuous and cumulative practice enables the lessening of the asthma attacks. the breath and to be able to push out that is very helpful in asthma. When the person first get exposed to the allergy, it's the emotional stress and the fear, excess fear, anger that really drives the generation of lots and lots of that antibody. Then it is other parts of the body such as a weak, weak adrenals, weak liver, weak production of natural antihistamines and etc. that excessively make this allergy grow. People can get skin allergies, food allergies, and respiratory. Now we can see from this diagram that most of the intestinal and skin allergies will be grown out of. They will diminish. It's the respiratory allergies that excessively grow as we get older. This is very stubborn. And this is where the mast cells inside the eyes and the ears and the sinuses and etc., along with the lymphatic points, get a tendency to hold on to this large amount of mast cells and thereby they make this allergy. There is an emotional link to the allergy, and the skio can help to desensitize that fear response. We can use NLP to deal with that fear and to deal with the idea of when you were first, first exposed. It's that fear. Here's a little exercise you can do at home. By asking you to relax your breathing, relax the muscles, reduce all the stress and tension in your body. As you are relaxing, we're going to be maneuvering you through some mental images about the first time you felt the allergen, what emotional stress was present when th that happened, how fear, stress, anxiety, and pain might have caused the allergy. We're going to ask you to release that stress, release the pain, and forgive the cause or the stressor that created that. Focus the mind on the allergy and allow the mind with a gentle massage to be able to break free the allergy in that area. As we release the past stress from that symptom area, we will improve the body's ability and we will allow the body to reduce and control the allergy. Imagine the first time you felt the allergy. Imagine the first time you felt the allergen. Imagine the first time you felt the allergen. What emotional stress was present? What emotional stress was present? What emotional stress was present? Feel the stress, fear, anxiety, or the pain. Feel the stress, fear, anxiety, or the pain. Feel the stress, fear, anxiety, or the pain. Release stress and pain and forgive the stressor or cause of that pain. Release stress and pain and forgive the stressor or cause of that pain. Release stress and pain and forgive the stressor or cause of that pain.
focus the mind on the area of the allergy. Focus the mind on the area of the allergy. Focus the mind on the area of the allergy. Release the past stress from the symptom area. Release the past stress from the symptom area. Release the past stress from the symptom area. Mentally remove all fear, guilt, pain, and stress from the area of the allergy. Mentally remove all fear, guilt, pain, and stress from the area of the allergy. Mentally remove all fear, guilt, pain, and stress from the area of the allergy. Repeat this exercise at home. Try to be able to track back through the neurolinguistic programming that has developed this allergy. Set free the emotions, forgive the stressors, and help your body to reduce the allergic response. Now we need good oils, not bad oils. We need to learn and read the books on home nutrition and quantum nutrition because it's freely in the diet but also I want to bring up the idea of the sauna. You see, because when we get into the sauna and we brush the skin and that's redness color, when we, when we take those green sticks and we scratch and we use loofah, the redness of the skin is histamine. Histamine that is being drawn out and irreversibly drawn out of the body. So by doing these conditions with the sauna and, and the, the red skin demonstration, salt, rubs, etc., we can diminish the histamine in the body drastically diminish the histamine and thereby improve all our allergies. Here's a list of some of the basic herbs that can be used to help hay fever allergies. Coffee, alfalfa, different types of teas, etc. All of these very helpful. Drinking lots of water, very, very helpful to help cleanse out the system, cleanse the lymphatic system. We talked about the desensitization, making your own water, and then gradually to desensitize and lower those mast cells. And you can also do this with histamine release in the sauna. We need to be able to get to the parts of the fear response that, that started that, and that also can help build that allergy. We want to be able to deal with the different ideas and recognize that there are solutions. Dealing with the liver, cleansing out the liver, dealing with the adrenals, dealing with the different ideas of low thyroid, low adrenal. These different things can all come together and help us to really get to the heart of the allergy situation. And a, a adrenal massage onto the adrenal glands can be done to help stimulate adrenal. And adrenaline is a natural antihistamine. We have to look at all of the factors that weaken the adrenals and everything that weakens the adrenals will make the allergy more intense. So we want to deal with the whole system and reduce stress. One of the basic ideas of biofeedback is to reduce stress. And we can use this with the development of the desensitization system to help people to not get the breakdown, but to be able to deal, to desensitize and to deal with their allergies correctly and distinctly. This can all be done with the system and as you learn with the help of your mentor and your skio, you can learn how to deal with people's allergies very easily, very correctly. Be cautious, always work with the references from a medical doctor and work together to help people to reduce allergies and become more in tune. Let's look at some other ideas of nutrition and things that you can do in your life from another naturopathic doctor's this advice. Time of year when allergies start popping up along with spring flowers. So joining me now to talk about natural ways to treat allergy symptoms is Dr. Clark Hansen from the Hansen Clinic of Natural Medicine. It's good to see you. Thank you. Perfect timing. My poor mom is suffering oh, every you're, yeah. day. Remember you told me about her last year. Yes. This is the time you want to be outside. It's beautiful, gorgeous weather. I love the smell of orange blossoms. Me too. But for some people it's misery. Yes. Because their eyes start watering, their nose starts running. They, 
They just get all congested. They can't think. They can't see. It's just an awful time of year, but they should be enjoying it. And the top of the conversation is with their girlfriends. Oh, I'm taking this. Oh, I'm taking this. Right. And they're taking all these over-the-counter oh. medicines. But they have some pretty serious side effects. Yeah, very serious. And there's A to Z. We've got uh, Allegra, Benadryl, Claritin, ABC. We skipped to Z, Zyrtec. But there's quite a few in between. There's a lot of drugs. These are multi-billion dollar industry drugs. Right, right. And tens of millions of patients are... People are taking them to relieve their allergy symptoms, and they don't know about these side effects. What happens is the pharmaceutical industry, when they test these drugs, they only test them on about maybe a thousand, maybe as much as five thousand patients, and only for two to four weeks, the oh. average for these these drugs. And so you don't notice all the side effects. The ones they tell you listed in the physician's reference manual will be drowsiness. Dry eyes, dry mouth, dry nose. Of course, that's the antihistamine making it too dry. Right. But dizziness, somnolence, so you get not only drowsy but real sleepy. Yes. And that's I've about that. all you hear. And Claritin is supposed to be less sedating, but it still causes drowsiness, depending upon the person. So they are central nervous system depressants. Mm -hmm. And what people don't learn is that until after they get out and millions of people start using them, we find the other side effects. And Seldane was one of the best allergy antihistamines and it actually caused fatal heart irregularities and arrhythmias. A lot wow. of patients died and what happens now, the pharmaceutical industry doesn't find this out until they get out and millions are taking them and people start to die and it used to be if one patient died they take that drug off the market. Now it's up to almost a hundred. So okay. we've got Allegra which is a second generation of Seldane. It's a metabolite of Seldane. We're kind of wondering, is this going to start yeah. to cause problems? Well, how do you know about this? Where do you find out? Well, is there anything that's safe that you can take to relieve this, you know, the water eyes, the sneezing, the yeah. miseries? Nature is so incredible. Why do two people go outside? One person loves the smell of citrus blossoms. The next person says, oh, I hate it. It makes yeah. my eyes water. It makes me sneeze. It's because of a deficiency, not of Zyrtec, not of Claritin, a deficiency of bioflavonoids. So fruits mainly are the main ingredients that we use that have these bioflavonoids. Grapes are the most potent of all of these, and the grape seeds is the best. But we can't find yeah. grape seeds too much. In the grocery store, you can't even find seeded grapes anymore. Because I don't want to eat the seeds anyway. No, I had a friend tell me he planted <laughs> grapes in his backyard. It took two years to grow. They had seeds in them. He had no idea that grapes had seeds in them, so he ripped <laughs> them all out. But what we have is mut mutant grapes is what these are. Yeah. This is one in generation. You can't... You know, they can't reproduce. So it's is that a, what you have here then? So these are the ingredients that I put in my product called Flavinox. Now, I've created a whole line of products, Dr. Hansen's Vital Formulations. Over my 22 years of practice, I found out what works, what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And so we've got the seeds of grapes, and this is about five pounds of grapes here. In one of these? The five pounds of grapes makes about that much wow. bioflavonoids from the seeds and wow. the skins. So what we do is we take the grape seeds, we add it to... Camellia sinensis, this is green tea, it's decaffeinated. We add that with quercetin, which comes from onions, the, the yellow part of the outside of an orange that you throw, or onion you throw away, that's got quercetin in it, mm -hmm. and then vitamin C. Oh. So those four ingredients are what make up Flavinox, and this does better than the, the uh, antihistamines, which only block histamine once it's in the body. Right. This actually strengthens the mast cells, and we have some pictures of the mast cells to and show. And you said that's the key. You're strengthening those cells. Right. They actually enhance the body's uh, immune function rather than just block histamine. I so see. So the mast cell releases those little dots there, histamine going out of the mast cell, and those big yellow balls are pollen. That pollen can be citrus blossom pollen. It can be ragweed. Um, those cause the histamine to be released. That causes the runny nose, the watery itchy eyes, I the see. burning. So those things you the allergy medicines just block the histamine which can cause too much drying cause right, then infections mm -hmm. but they also cause depression mm -hmm. and severe mood disorders so we've got a slide to show some of the side effects yeah that's with those over-the-counter things that you hear so much about and right. some of them are you know obvious ones the fatigue I know that that kind of goes along with it but some of them are pretty the drowsiness serious, yeah. everybody knows that and hyperactivity but in children like they hyperactivity need more in children children are more sensitive so if you give it to children it can actually cause not only hyperactivity but erratic sleep and mood disorders they'll get very depressed they'll mm -hmm. get aggressive they have ADD like symptoms they can even get hypertension especially in children
Okay. So yeah, there's a lot of scary stuff out there when it comes to this. Now, if you want to learn more, because I know a lot of people, you probably sparked a lot of interest. They get, uh oh, that's me. Right. You have a seminar coming up. You really, really explain this in more detail, right? right? Monday, March 23rd, we're going to have a seminar at the Scottsdale Mustang Library. It's right next to the Scottsdale Memorial Hospital, 6:30 to 7:30 p.m. We'd like everybody to come, bring your questions. If you're taking any of these allergy medications, oh, sure. you need to find out what the side effects are. A lot of people have no idea. You can go to our website, drhanson.com, and start to learn about it. Okay. But come bring your questions. We're going to have products there available so you can actually start to experience this. We want you to go out and get it now. Some people are already have an allergy symptoms. Oh, it's really are strong you kidding? Oh, right they've now. They've already had them. Yeah. And you don't want to be messing around with these drugs. These are made from nature. They work in harmony with the body. They strengthen the cells in the body, and they have side benefits instead of side effects. effects. They actually enhance the collagen of the body throughout the body, which is the skin, the blood vessels, the okay. immune system. All right, it's Dr. fabulous. Hanson. Well, thank you very much because thank I know you. this is a big problem for a lot of folks. If you want more information, including the details on the seminar that we just spoke about, you can visit Dr. Hansen at drhanson.com. There's the phone number right there on your screen. Give him a call. Start feeling now, better now. You can work with your mentor and learn how to use the SKIO system, how to use the QXCI, EPFX, or SKIO to help to desensitize your allergies. It's very simple, and I'm gonna go through a real brief idea of it now. From the test screen, you go to the allergy button up in the upper left there. This will take you to the allergy screen, where you'll be able to see from having done the calibration, the demographics and the test and all this, you'll be able to see just what the person has reacted to. Now, in order to test these out, you'll go to the system, click on each one of these items, and retest that item a couple of times working with the body to find out whether it's a, a gastrointestinal leaky gut disturbance that's creating a small allergy or it's a, a large mast cell disturbance, etc. And putting this all together, when you double click on an item, it will be stored into this matrix. This will allow those, those uh, a large allergy report to be accumulated, which will be able to be then desensitized either individually or in group. You can go to the, this page and be able to work to desensitize the allergies. You can go here and find out the causes, the aggravations, the mental factors, the organs. You can be able to help the patient to see a whole picture of all the different things that really affect them and in order to reduce the allergies completely, here's a very good list. Get a copy of this from, the, from your uh, system and be able to remember that by doing all of these little factors, you can really help people to deal with their allergies. It's body, mind, and spirit, but we are also social and environmental. This is the whole of the system that we need to deal with and what we deal with holistic. To become a certified allergy relief therapist, get a mentor, do 20 patients, take the test, pay your certification dues, and get a certificate on the wall that shows you are a certified allergy relief therapist. And then keep working on your doctorate and become a qualified SCIO licensed biofeedback practitioner. Desiree Dubonnet, signing off.